but it's so small. Hey, my friends, welcome to episode three of my gear vlog. Today we're talking about examples of small but handy gear. Every country has some type of coin, to my knowledge. And in the U.S., we have uh, six coins. I have five of them here. Um, I'm missing the dollar. And these coins can be used uh, for a variety of, of uses. And one of them could be to you know, tighten something or to loosen something or to pry into something. And while they're very small items... Uh, they can be useful. And so one of the of the interesting things that you might want to know about the coins in your currency is the thickness of your coins. And what you find is that they're all just a little bit different, typically speaking. Um, so, for example, the cent or the penny is here in America is 1.55 millimeters pretty small. The dime is actually smaller or uh, thinner, if you will, at 1.35 millimeters. The next is the nickel, and the nickel is 1.95 millimeters thick. And what's interesting is that the, the nickel is actually thicker than the quarter, and the quarter is 1.75 millimeters. The half dollar is 2.15 millimeters. And of course, once again, the, the coin that I don't have to represent the dollar is two millimeters. So something to kind of know, um, especially in your currency, you know, of your coins, so that you can kind of, you know, use uh, your coins for different purposes and knowing the thickness and even the overall size in terms of you know, the, the circumference or the width um, can do a lot uh, in just different situations. You know, maybe you don't have a ruler, but if you know how wide your coin is that you carry, maybe it's a certain denomination, of course, uh, you could use that uh, to help you solve a problem. So, uh, just one of uh, many things that you can carry on yourself uh, to kind of help prepare yourself for unexpected situations. A small pair of scissors can also be very helpful throughout your day. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I use scissors. It's not like all the time, but you know, when you need them, you need them. And it's not just for a thread that's coming undone on a shirt, uh, even though it is very helpful. Uh, but maybe you're out fishing and you need to cut some fishing line or other things. I mean, if you get some high quality scissors like these, uh, these are very sharp and they hold an edge for a long time and they have really good tension. They're not, there's no play on the blades or with, between the blades. And it's one of these things when you find a piece of quality, um, you know, kit, you kind of stick with it. Like this has the uh, rounded, blunted uh, tip here um, so that you don't accidentally puncture something or hurt yourself or uh, go through your, your pouch or your bag that you have it stored or maybe a pocket. And so these are really nice. Now, uh, I've kind of been able to find some of these nicer scissors in... Um, various kits that are kind of like grooming kits so it's just a, a place to start and a lot of times you can buy these kind of like as a standalone item in a lot of big box stores so you know keep an eye out for a good pair of scissors um, they can definitely be very versatile it's very handy to have a small charging cord for your electronic devices especially your cell phone and tablets and you know, even though this is not a standard length, um, it is better than having nothing. There's times that I may go over to a friend's house and spend the night or travel and just completely forget my charging cable. 
And even though the one at home is like three feet long, and it's very, you know, comfortable and convenient to use, this still works. You know, this is better than nothing. So, yeah, um, there are so many times that I've had to use my backup cord because I just forgot to bring the main one. So it's very, very easy to bring this along. I mean, you can keep it in a pocket or in a, a pouch or someplace in a, in a bag. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely something that can really pay off, especially if you get stranded somewhere and you need to top off your phone to make important phone calls uh, or to get some different uh, bits of information off the web. Uh, if your device is not um, you know, working, if it's not operational, uh, you've got a bigger problem there. Now, you can use a standard size pencil and cut it down, or you can find just small pencils. They have different sizes out there. And this is a smaller pencil um, that uh, is very handy. I just kind of put a little loop there on the bottom just so I can clip it on things. But uh, with the pencil, you can take, you know, your pocket knife or other sharp devices and uh, other tools and, uh, you know, get a point back on it, you know, if you kind of used it and worn it down. And so that's what the beauty about these little pencils is that, you know, ink um, is a little more particular about when it's going to work. If it's too cold out, it could, uh, it could freeze up. I mean, I've had pens that have frozen. And it's like, okay, what do you do now? And, uh, you know, when the Russians went up to space, and instead of trying to develop, you know, some kind of pressurized ink cartridge like the Americans, they just went with pencils. And that's the beauty with the simplicity of the pencil. It, it works. It works upside down. It, uh, I think, to my knowledge, it even works in a, a whole wide range of environments outside of even, like, uh, you know, zero gravity. So a pretty cool, pretty cool product. You know, it's so simple. And uh, just for one clarification, um, a lot of people think it's lead that's in the pencil. And, and that's not true. It's a graphite. There's a big difference. Now, long, long time ago, in, uh, in a very limited way, there was actually lead used in some pencils. But that's been a long time. And uh, I think that people just kind of use the word lead kind of in a generic sense. But once again, it's really graphite. The in-the-ear ear protection is kind of my favorite backup uh, ear protection type. They come in like gel or foam, and there's probably others. But these things are so small, and once again, they, they're about as light as air. Uh, this one has like a, a nylon cord that's uh, keeping them together. And so you can use these while you travel to help you fall asleep. Um, you can also use these as a, a backup ear protection if you're at the range and you forget your, maybe your standard or your, you know, traditional over-the-ear uh, ear protection. And you can also use these if you have like a bad headache, for example, and you're traveling and you don't want to completely, you know, block out all the sound. So you only insert these maybe like a third or a half way. Uh, I know some people when they travel, especially they travel alone, they don't want to really dampen like a lot of noise because maybe for personal protection, they want the ability to be kind of, uh, you know, able to hear and wake up if someone's trying to break into their hotel room. So what they do is they trim off part of the uh, earplug so that it kind of reduces the effectiveness of the, uh, the hearing protection. So it's just one idea. But these things are really, really kind of important. Uh, if you can preserve your hearing uh, during a situation, that really gives you a bit of an advantage over others that do not have their ears uh, to be used. And so these things are uh, something that you don't want to, uh, you know, kind of uh, brush off. Safety pins not only come in different sizes, but materials. And they can do a lot of stuff. Um, I'm trying to make a quick, uh, short list in my head, but there's so many things. I mean, you can use it for first aid. You can make an improvised compass out of these. Um, it just goes on and on. So there's probably thousands of uses, no joke, for just the simple uh, safety pin. It's, it's a really interesting invention. I mean, it's just 
it's so simple, but it's so useful. And because it's just so small and basically it's like a feather that you can carry a few of these in, in your in your wallet or in a bag. And uh, you can even keep it on your key ring. You know, I typically keep a few on my key ring and it's just there just in case, you know, once again, for all these uses, it's just such a handy item. Why not have it? Having a light is very important to identify threats and to help you uh, complete a task, you know, to be effective at what you're doing. Uh, if you can't see what you're doing, you know, obviously you're going to have a low probability of actually getting that done. Uh, so, you know, we have so many options in the modern day. Uh, you know, you can carry a, a small light in your pocket. Uh, you can carry it around uh, some kind of breakaway lanyard around your neck, uh, on your keys, on a key ring, and, and so forth. I mean, they are so small. They use so many different types of batteries. Some of them are just amazing LEDs that are in these lights. They're just tremendous output. And so, you know, whatever you're looking for, it's probably out there. And, uh, you know, some of these weigh less than an ounce, even less than half an ounce, and some of them have rechargeable batteries, and even those that don't have rechargeable batteries have amazing run times uh, compared to just even a few years ago. Having the means to make fire and to extend that flame is a really big deal, especially if you have a, a real survival situation. Now, most of us will not have a survival situation, uh, most likely in the near future or ever. But if you do, it's really handy to have a lighter. And these small lighters, small fire starters, a candle, um, are just so easy to carry. And you know, just compare it to just a you know generic uh, a lighter here that's more full size. You can see that they're just you know pretty small. Or here it's just a standard size lighter compared to the the other smaller offerings. And you can just tell right off the bat, bang. That, you know, these things are small, they're very lightweight, and uh, they have uh, the ability to produce quite a few uh, flames, you know, and to get fire started. So, you know, I think that any and all kits actually should have a means to make fire. And in fact, maybe more than one just to be safe. The pill fob. This thing doesn't get talked about very much at all. But they come in different sizes and made out of different materials. But a lot of them have O seals, and so they are watertight. Here is what I would consider more of a medium sized pill fob. And you can actually put quite a few uh, pills in there. I mean, not like a whole week's worth, but maybe a day or two worth of pills. You could put vitamins in there. Um, and this particular fob, uh, I actually have a bit of cotton balls uh, that is actually mixed with petroleum jelly so as a as a fire tender and so it goes with uh, my fire starter and of course uh, my multi-tool and it's just a really easy way to give yourself just a little bit of an extra edge in case that you're in a real hurry to start a fire but of course you could use it for a lot of other reasons uh, some people actually write out an emergency contact list and they put it in there and uh, some people put emergency cash in their fobs. And uh, yeah, there's, the possibilities are almost endless. One category of products that I just believe that everyone should have on their person when they leave their house, it should be a blade of some type. It could be a type of self-defense blade. It could be more of a utility blade. It could be just more of an everyday carry blade. And it's really something that is so important. It's not something that you just use for your job, but it could be used to save your life. Maybe you have to get that seatbelt off and you're upside down in your car after you just hit another car in a car wreck. And if you don't get out, the gas that's leaking all over you may combust and you could burn to death. And so knives have saved countless lives. It's probably amazing to actually uh, to know what the real numbers are. It would be really interesting, but I don't think we really have any way to know that. Uh, but history is probably full of examples of that. The amazing 
results that have come about about people being prepared and actually having a blade on their person. And lastly, when it comes to small items that's easy to carry and very useful, super practical, the multi-tool is up high on the list. You can get them that are very small and very thin. And they're just overall, once again, just so useful. And for those times that you can't carry something larger, you know, a tool that's going to give you more leverage, more options, and more comfort, you can still have some level of capability with these little guys. And so they make them even smaller than this. I mean, they make some very small multi-tools. And so you really have options. And they don't have to cost much either. You can get very high quality multi-tools for very little money. And it's one of those things these days that we have like so many interesting uh, inventors out there. And I just want to say thank you to all those people that took time to create things like this, to help people all around the world. And I think it's really awesome that people have this ability to be creative and we should celebrate that more. That's one of the things about being human that's so amazing that we can be so aware of our environment and we can be creative as we live. We can actually participate in life in ways that you know other creatures can't even imagine. So I just want to thank you as well for checking this video out. Thanks for your ongoing support and I'll catch you soon.